Factoring part two. Yes, cheesy play on words. Um, part two of factoring day, we're gonna deal with what we call AC method or the box method. I'll show you both so that you can get a grip on what they look like. Um, they are basically the same thing. One is just more of a visual picture for those of you that are visual and need to see what it looks like. We're gonna start with AC method. It's called that not because we're talking about air conditioning, something that we badly need today, but because in a trinomial like this one, the terms are marked A, B, and C, and the first thing you do in AC method is multiply the A term times the C term. So we're gonna do three times four, which is 12. We're gonna take that number 12, and we're gonna go through all the factors of 12 that multiply to equal 12, and then see which of those factors also add up to equal eight. So we'll start with the first ones. One times 12 it gives you 12, but one plus 12 is not eight. So that's not gonna be the two factors. Um, two times six, two times six is 12. And if you add two plus six, that equals eight. So my two factors are two and six. Those are the two factors of 12 that are gonna work. Now what we're gonna do with those two numbers, the two and the six, is we're gonna take this trinomial, we're gonna expand it. And instead of writing eight X in the middle, we're gonna break it into two parts, two X and six X, because that'll add up to equal eight X. So we're gonna rewrite this as three X squared plus two X plus six X plus four. Now we're gonna go back to what we did yesterday and we're gonna group. So we're gonna group these two and we're gonna group these two. So the first set of parentheses, the greatest common factor is going to be an X. And so what's left in parentheses, once you pull out that X, you're gonna have three X plus two Put your plus sign. Now the greatest common factor for six X and four is gonna be a two. And so what's left here is three X plus two. And just like yesterday, the two sets of parentheses are the same, which tells me that one of my factors is three X plus two. My other factor is this stuff right here, X plus two. These are the two factors that multiply to equal this trinomial right here. That's your answer. Don't put a plus sign in between these when you get here. This is something y'all were doing today in class. Just these two should be multiplied together because they are factors. Factors means multiplication. So let's try the next one. It has a fun little step involved, but we're gonna start it the same way. We're gonna do A times C. So we're gonna multiply two times six, which is 12 again. But this time we need two factors of 12 that also add to negative seven. Well, we went through one and 12 and two and six just a minute ago with the previous problem and they didn't equal seven. So we'll start with the next one, three and four. Three times four is 12. And if I add three and four, I get seven, but I need a negative seven. That means that my two factors are negative three and negative four. Because when I multiply two negatives, I get a positive. But when I add two negatives, I get a negative. So they're both gonna be negative to make this middle term come out negative. So we're gonna rewrite 2x squared minus 3x minus 4x. I'm actually gonna write this as plus negative 4x plus six. You'll see why I did that in just a second. So now I'm gonna group. So I'm gonna group like I did a minute ago. Here's the reason why I put that plus sign in the middle is so I can keep the negative in the parentheses but keep the plus sign in between my two so it doesn't look like I'm multiplying. Greatest common factor for these two right here, it's still gonna just be x. So I still have a two X minus three, put my plus sign. Now here, the greatest common factor between four and six is two, but because this four has a negative on it, I'm gonna factor out a negative two. So what I have to multiply times negative two to get a negative four X is a positive two X so that these make a negative. And then a negative times a negative will give me the positive six and it's gotta be a three. I had to pull out the negative two in order for my two sets of parentheses to turn out the same. If you don't pull out that negative, your parentheses won't be the same. They'll be the opposites of each other and you'll have to adjust. So if you run across a problem like that, go double check it and see if maybe you needed to pull out a negative greatest common factor instead of just the positive one. So my two factors are gonna be two X minus three and X plus negative two or X minus two. It's the same thing. So those are my two factors for that polynomial. All right, next one. <clears throat> so here we go. Start, I'm gonna do box method with this one so that y'all can see what the box method looks like. So box method is exactly what it sounds like. You draw a box and you divide it into four quadrants. 
Up here in the top right quadrant goes your first term in your polynomial, 4m squared, and in the bottom right corner goes the last term, 5. What goes in these two boxes? Now it's sort of like AC method. You still have to do 4 times 5 to get 20. And you still have to come up with the two factors that multiply to 20 that also add to 9, which in this case are 4 and 5. And so in these two boxes go these two factors with the m. So I have 4m and 5m. And so I've, there, I've taken care of that. But this is just like expanding it long ways, except I'm putting it in a box so I have a pretty little visual. Now I'm going to do greatest common factor just for this row. The greatest common factor for this row is 4m. And then the greatest common factor for this row is 5. And then I'm going to do columns. The greatest common factor for this column right here is m. And the greatest common factor for this column is 1. So here are my two factors. One of them is right here. The other one is up here across the top. So I have 4m plus 5. And then I have m plus 1. Those are my two factors. That's box method. It's the same thing as AC. It's just more in a visual little box. You sort of see what's going on a little bit better. It, I don't care which one you use. Just, you know, whatever is your preference. So let's do the next one. I'll do box method again so you can see it one more time. So you draw a box. Break it into four quadrants. Top left quadrant is your x squared. Bottom left quadrant is the 28. So now we have to multiply the a term times the c term. Now there's not a coefficient here, which means there's a little invisible one. So 1 times 28 is 28. I need two factors of 28 that also add to equal 11. Let's think of factors of 28. 1 and 28, that's not going to work. 2 and 14, that won't work. Uh, 3 doesn't go into 28. 4 times 7, oh, well, 4 plus 7 is 11, so there are my two factors. So in these two boxes, and it doesn't matter which one you put where, it honestly doesn't, you can put 4x and 7x. Now, the greatest common factor of this top row is x. The greatest common factor of the bottom row is 7. And then the greatest common factor of this column is x. And of this column is 4. So your two factors are x plus 4 times x plus 7. Now hopefully you just noticed something with this problem because this is kind of nifty. If you look at my two factors, there's the 4 and there's the 7 that I came up with when I did the AC method. That is because when your coefficient in front of the x squared is just a 1, these two are your factors. And so you don't really have to go through all this mumbo jumbo and all of that. These are your factors. You just plug them in and go. If you can't remember that, do the box or AC method. It doesn't really matter. So let's practice some more. I'm going to go back to AC method because it's just what I prefer. I don't care how you choose to do it from here. So A times C, 3 times negative 14 is going to be negative 42. So I need two factors of negative 42 that are going to equal positive 1 when I add them. Well, since this is negative when I multiply, it means one of the numbers must be negative. Um, 6 times 7 is 42. And since one of them has to be negative, let's do negative 6 and positive 7. Well, negative 6 plus 7 equals positive 1. There are my two factors. So we're going to rewrite this. 3z squared minus 6z plus 7z minus 14. Group them. Greatest common factor for this one is 3z. So I have z minus 2. And then the greatest common factor here is 7, which leaves me with z minus 2. So my two factors are 3z plus 7 and z minus 2. <coughs> now the next one is really, it's not that difficult, it's just the numbers are big. And so the greatest common, or the finding the two factors takes just a few minutes, but y'all are all smart people, you have a calculator somewhere. I mean, you have one on your computer, one on your phone. You should be able to multiply to make this happen. So we're going to start it out. 10 times negative 27 is going to be negative 270. This is what I mean. The number is really, really big. And so I need two factors that multiply to negative 270 that add to equal negative 3, which means one of my numbers is negative. It also, also tells me that my numbers have got to be pretty big in order for me to add them up and get negative 3. What I mean by that is that I couldn't use... Um, 
3 and 90 as my two factors because they are not close enough together to add or subtract and come up with negative 3. So the numbers have got to be bigger than 3 or bigger than 5. I mean, they're going to have to be up there and they're going to have to be close together. Um, I've already worked this through process of elimination and the two numbers are going to be 15 and negative 18. If you check it, when you multiply those, they equal negative 270, and hopefully you see that 15 plus negative 18 is negative 3. Now, when I plug these in, I'm going to put the negative 18 first because I want a plus sign in the middle of my polynomial. I don't like having the minus sign in the middle. It doesn't matter. It's just easier to keep up this way. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. Group. So my greatest common factor here is going to be 2x which leaves me with 5x minus 9. My greatest common factor here is going to be 3, which leaves me 5x minus 9. And so these two factors, 5x minus 9 and 2x plus 3, are the ones that work to give me that polynomial. Okay, I think I'm going to... No, I'm not going to skip the slide because I need you to see the very first one. It's these two. These two problems are pretty important. This right here is not a trinomial like all of the other ones we have seen. And since we have not talked about special products yet, we have to talk about how we can factor this. Because this is a special product. I know that because I've been teaching algebra since there was dirt. But you don't know that yet. So we have to come up with a way to factor that. So we're going to rewrite this as 4x squared plus 0x, because there's nothing in the middle, minus 9. And then we'll factor just like we factored everything else. So 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. And I need two numbers that multiply to negative 36 that add to equal 0. Well, since this is a pretty little perfect square, and it's a negative one, negative 6 and 6. Those equal negative 36, and when I add them, they cancel each other out, leaving me with nothing in the middle. So you're going to have to rewrite 4x squared minus 6x plus 6x minus 9. And we got a group and greatest common factor. Greatest common factor here is 2x, leaving me with 2x minus 3. And then the greatest common factor here is 3, leaving me with 2x minus 3. And so your two factors are 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 3. In a couple days, we are going to talk about special products, which you heard me mention that just a minute ago. And you will learn a shortcut to factoring problems like this. But for today, you're going to have to add that middle term. Okay, last one here. This one has a negative in front of the A term. This is not okay. We cannot factor as long as there is a negative A. We ha a has to be positive. So this first term of your polynomial has to be a positive. Otherwise, I can't factor with any method that I have shown you to this point. So the first thing you're going to have to do is factor out a negative 1 so that I can make that A term positive. If I factor out a negative 1, this becomes 5B squared minus 7B plus 2. And so now I can factor what I have left in parentheses using the AC or the box method. So I start by doing 5 times 2, which is 10. And I need two numbers multiply to 10, add to equal negative 7. So I have negative 5 and negative 2. So I'm going to keep this negative 1 here. I just Nothing's going to happen with it yet. And I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to go ahead and group as I write it. So I have 5B squared minus 2B plus negative 5B plus 2. Um, I flip-flopped the order of these. It doesn't matter which one you put where. You're still going to come up with the same answer. So carry the negative 1 down, and let's go ahead and factor. So the greatest common factor for this set of parentheses is going to be a B, leaving me with 5B minus 2. And the greatest common factor for this set of parentheses is going to have to be a 1. But because that first term inside the parentheses is a negative, I'm going to factor out a negative 1 so that when I have what's left, it matches what's over here. So negative 1 times 5B will give me the negative 5B I need. And then negative 1 times negative 2 will give me the positive 2 that I need. And so inside here gives me the two factors. Negative 1 is one of my factors because I took it out at the very beginning. Then 5B minus 2 is another factor. And B minus 1 is the other one. So there, that is factored completely and totally. You are all done. So there is factoring part two. I will see you guys tomorrow.